Welcome to Outlander Media Network. I'm Kirby Lee Bailey, and this is John Kassir, your Crypt Keeper. How's it going, John? Welcome aboard. <laughs> I'm having a good time, my friend. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you enjoying the convention? You know, I always do. I think I probably wouldn't do it if it wasn't something that I enjoyed um, and had fun doing. You know, I, I collected the comic books as a kid, so I've always loved horror. It was just kind of ironic that I wound up, uh, you know, being the Crypt Keeper um, over the years. It was just, I'm probably getting the part, you know, partly had to do with the fact that I understood the, the culture of Tales from the Crypt that, from being the kid and collecting the comic books. Who created the doll for that? Um, you know, the, the puppet, and I'm going to remove this so you can hear me a little better. Um... Uh, <laughs> um, was uh, Kevin Yeager, of course, who also made uh, Chucky, and also made you know designed for Freddy Krueger, and you know Kevin's one of the best in the business, if not the best. And um, in fact, when I went to audition, they had the auditions at Kevin Yeager's studio, so you could see the puppet and do it for Kevin first, because he was trying to match up the voice. And he was working on the puppet. You know, they didn't have a large budget to start with. HBO was in their earlier stages. And um, so he was using a lot of spare parts. And he actually used Chucky's eyes. Uh, he had some spare eyeballs from Chucky that he used in the, uh, uh, on the original puppet. So as soon as I started doing the voice, he was like, yeah, that's it, you know. <laughs> and I uh, told the producers, uh, you know, recently he told me this. Um, that he told the producers if they don't hire, he goes, if you don't hire this guy, I'm not doing it. He goes, because he's perfect for it. And of course, I, I did the audition the next day for uh, Joel Silver and Richard Donner, who are two of the biggest guys in the business at that time. You know, and um, and they were like, great, you're hired. Maybe one of the easiest jobs they ever got. Really? Yeah. Well, I like to say, when back in the 80s, I played football in high school. Oh, did you? And I remember this special team that you played for. <laughs> the California Bulls, the yes. <laughs> Yalos Kaczynski, <laughs> Zagreb Shkinuski. Yeah. And that was such a great show. Oh, my God, I loved First and Ten. You know, and, and you know, First and Ten was HBO's first series. And, uh, of course, I was working with, you know, O.J. Simpson. I was just uh, telling a couple of folks that uh, I have a photo somewhere of me with O.J. Simpson on one side of me and, and uh, Joe Namath on the other. But they had different football players on the show all the time, as well as, uh, you know, some of the great uh, actors who this was their first series that they worked on, whether it was Delta Burke, uh, who owned the team, and, uh, and then Chris Maloney was on the, uh, from SVU, was, was a quarterback on the show. For Tom some, Unessa, right? Uh, oh, that was, uh, that was Jason Begay. Played Tom Yanessa. Oh, okay, I got it mixed up. And uh, that's okay. Good, good guess though. You remembered the quarterback. Well, I know uh, he's on a regular show now. Yeah, too. Yeah, Jason. Jason is on. Uh, was it Chicago Cop? You know, he's he's always a working actor and a great actor. Um, but there was so many different people that worked on that show. And then, of course, I got to you know as a high school football player myself. Um, you know, I, I had just an amazing time meeting so many of my my football heroes see i remember you doing the the dance with the steroids thing and, <laughs> <laughs> and your marbles <laughs> yeah we were we were making fun of john matuzak and you know sadly john matuzak wound up having a heart attack probably from doing steroids but um i don't uh, that's not confirmed but that you know but uh you know i mean those guys had a tough time trying to keep up in the in the nfl and, um, you know, they weren't as well protected um, as they are now in terms of health issues. Um, you know, uh, I mean, Joe Namath, when I got to meet Joe, he was, you know, such a great quarterback. But you could see how, how badly beaten up he had been from, from years of taking hits, you know. Well, see, I remember the one season I thought y'all were going to win the championship. That's right. And it tied in to the instant replay. Yeah, right. <laughs> and a review it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That was that was when it first started, and then there was the one the one video that the Chicago Bears had done, and we did our version of it. You know, with uh, you know, there was this funny, scene, you know, part of the video. I'm sitting there doing this, 
with you know with and tiny lister <laughs> was had his pecs going up and down and you know you know there's another guy that sadly uh died recently uh oh tiny know, lister that we lost oh, yeah. yeah well yeah. I, I mean i remember the guy that uh dr death that was uh Ogre or Revenge of the Nerds. You know, I've seen I've seen Don Gibb recently. You know, uh, at, at one of the conventions, and it was great seeing him. We had so much fun working on the show, and uh, anyway, that was a good era. Yeah. You know, and then they knew. You know, I working for HBO. They knew that I did a lot of voices and stuff in my stand up, so they invited me to audition for Tales from the Crypt. And that's how I wound up doing that. Show. That's, I, that's why I was. That's why I was trying to lead up to. One thing I loved about Tales from the Crypt is you'd have these celebrities in there, you know, doing one-off episodes. Yeah. And, Every week. And a lot of them died. In. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What, do you have anything else coming down the pike that you know? I, I'm always, uh, you know, I mean, I have a uh, always doing voiceover work. You know, as you get older, there's less and less stuff for you on camera. Although I still get my share of on camera work. I still work in the theater where I started. I enjoy that. But the voiceover work's been great throughout my entire career, and has continued to be strong. You know, working a lot for Disney and and um, Illumination and uh, Nickelodeon and you know all these different places and of course doing a lot of advertising stuff too you know I continue to work and now I do a lot of my work from home uh, you know during the pandemic we couldn't really go to the sound studios as much to work you know and I have my own home studio and I was able to, to get a lot of work during that time and I'm grateful for that I enjoy doing it first of all but I'm also grateful for it I have a number of things coming out you know I had last year I had um, Flora and Ulysses, which was a you know big kids film for um, for Disney, you know playing Ulysses who's a squirrel, because having done Miko the raccoon for them, you know they go well he does a raccoon he must be able to do a squirrel, <laughs> so you know that worked out. <laughs> well, you know that's one thing good about voiceover work it's timeless. So yeah, <laughs> you, can... you know and and so you know you, and the Crypt Keeper just keeps getting more and more popular over the years because there's all these kids that watched it and now they're adults and they want to come you know meet their their you know gateway drug to horror the crypt keeper you know and so they show up here and so i've been doing the convention circuit because you know it's to give back to the fans and and uh, enjoy i mean i love horror myself so it's well worth it and uh you know, I'll be at Horror Hound in Cincinnati coming up, and then uh, the Texas Frightmare and uh, Crypticon in Seattle, and on and on through the year. You know, I always post on my uh, my Facebook uh, and Twitter page and uh, Instagram, you know, what's going on with my conventions um, and personal appearances, and they're all under my name, John Kassir, so K-A-S-S-I-R, you can find it there. Oh, that's like I said, that's great. I mean, I noticed you were here, so thank like you. I, said, I love Days of Dead, and I always wanted to see you. I always wanted to meet you. And I appreciate this interview. With the you. pleasure's all mine. Thank, thank you, guys. And we're with Outlander Media Network. John Cassier. Follow him on Twitter, Facebook, his own home net, which is johncassier.com, I hope. Uh, you know, my, my website, I don't use it anymore because people don't really go to them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> people go to social media, so I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to maintain this. Nobody really use, you know, pe you know people, I think people like social media because they, they can directly connect with you. You know, you can actually contact people directly, so uh, it's a wonderful thing to be able to, to do that with fans, especially. And, and old friends and, you know, other people in the business, but... Thank you very much. Right. I Listen, wish you guys all the best. One more sign off and uh, just do us a Crypt Keeper sign off for us. Hello, kitties. Be careful what you ask for. You may get it. <laughs>